In this video, I'm going to talk about making a dome with SDS modeling. Um, it's actually a pretty tricky problem because um, it's pretty much impossible to find the perfect topology to make a circular dome using quads. And I'll demonstrate exactly why. So I've got a cylinder here with 24 sides. I'm just going to quickly shift tab it to put it in SDS mode. If I select this polygon here and, uh, pardon me, quickly just bevel it in. And I'm going to make a dome kind of shape. So you just drag it up. And we'll have a look at that in uh, reflection mode. So if I just switch to reflection, take the wireframe off. So you can see that we've got all sorts of artifacts caused here. And that's because there's simply a big N gone here at the end. So a really quick way of fixing that would be to just use the uh, spiky command to triangulate these end polygon. So I've just done that quickly and you can see it certainly helps the outer part of um, our dome, but on the inside we've still got this uh, really nasty artifacting. So there is a very easy solution to this problem, but it is a bit of a hack. I'm going to show it to you anyway. So I'm just going to quickly switch back to advanced GL mode and I'm going to select this vertex here at the uh, cap and shift up arrow to select the uh, next uh, set of vertices and hold down um, Alt and convert that to a polygon selection. And I'm going to hit Alt C to activate the loop slice tool. And I'm just going to put a slice far up as I can, um, close as possible to that cap. And now if I hit shift down arrow, I've just got the triangles at the very cap and I'm simply going to delete them. Now, if I now switch back to reflection mode, turn the wireframe off, you can see that um, despite the little hole I've got, I've got a very nice result. So now if I switch to edge mode, I've got the edges already selected because they were selected uh, as faces. And I'm going to go shift A to zoom right in on that uh, little circle of edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale them down until they just start to overlap. So, oops. Maybe like that is perfect. And if I zoom right out now, you can see we've got a pretty good result. There's a tiny little bit of flattening at the very uh, tip, but overall it's pretty good. So you might think, well, uh, instead of making a hole, why don't we just cap the thing with quads? Uh, well, the problem is it just isn't possible to get a clean result uh, capping a circular dome shape like this with quads and I'll show you why. So if I just select these verts here, let me zoom in on them and uh, I'm just going to make them a bit bigger. And if I just convert that selection to edges very quickly, hit P to make a big polygon. And now I'm just going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift out of SDS, select that polygon in the middle and uh, shift H to hide everything else, go to the top view, shift A to zoom right in on this polygon I've just created. I'm going to uh, toggle my verts on and I'm also going to turn snapping on, make sure it's snapping to verts, which it is. Get the slice tool and just slice across. Uh, hold down shift to make a new cut without dropping the tool. I'm just going to switch to wire mode actually so I can see more clearly. Hold down shift again and uh, quickly slice up this uh, polygon into quads. Now the reason it's not going to work is that basically when you're slicing up a shape like this, you always have to leave um, an unconnected, a set of unconnected verts at the corners of the shape. And uh, you can see as I'm slicing up, this is exactly what's going to happen here because I can't slice these last um, polys here because they're already quads. If I slice them one more time, they're going to become triangles. So if I now drop the tool, show everything else, um, shift tab to um, put it back into SDS mode, you can see what's happening with these corner verts is there's this kind of stretching. So if I now go back to perspective and to reflection mode, Let's hide wireframe and verts. 
and you can see basically we've got this pinching there there's nothing I can do to avoid that so if we want to use quads and make a perfect dome we're gonna to have to uh, basically use a completely different approach which I'm going to demonstrate next so what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to um, select all these uh, polygons that are on the cap of our dome and I'm just going to delete them uh, switch back to advanced GL I'm going to flip the remaining polygons and I'm going to create a new mesh layer and in this new mesh layer I am going to make just a simple plane so let me uh, turn snapping off very quickly let me just drag out um, a box I'm going to make sure it's uh, centered in the X and the Z I'm going to make sure it has uh, eight segments in the X and the Z um, the number of segments isn't necessarily that important but it's definitely easier to manage with fewer segments and finally I'm just going to make sure that the um, that the plane is square. It doesn't. The, di the actual dimensions don't matter too much now. I'm just going to place it inside uh, the, um, the cylinder that I'd already created because we're going to use the cylinder as a guide. So now I'm going to drop this, uh, go to perspective view. I'm just going to put everything down inside the cylinder. And now I'm going to go to mesh constraints and put a background uh, constraint on vector. And now if I select my scale tool, you'll see what's going to happen is I'm going to scale out and my plane is going to conform to the edges of the cylinder. Now you can see that one edge is the outer edges are kind of crashing into each other, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Um, so I'm going to fix it. So I've hidden the background geometry. I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm simply going to select the outer edges and then expand them again. And now if I select this uh, next row on the inside, let me just um, I have to do it a little bit more slowly. If I hit shift G, I can connect these, uh, these edges by selecting one and then the next put my way all around, show the background geometry once again, and I'm just going to scale in and then scale out to conform to the uh, cylinder in the background and now I'm just going to um, basically scale this all back down and what I'll do is I'll bring it back into the um, guide cylinder just in case I decide I need to use that again that could prove useful uh, the next thing I'm going to do go back to top view and I'm going to turn my snapping back, back on and I'm going to drag a uh, radial fall off from the center of this right to the edges I'm just going to make sure that it's um, circular and now I'm going to switch back to my perspective view let's turn snapping back off and I'm going to activate the move tool and basically let's look from the side view I'm going to drag out a dome now um, the shape you use is controlled by the uh, by this uh, fall off here so I'm using ease in because that gives me a nice dome uh, you can also use custom that gives good results and if you ease in set the ease into one and the ease out to minus one you get a nice dome shape as well so now I've got my dome I'm going to switch back to perspective view drop my fall off and uh, I'm going to shift tab to see what that gives us so if I switch to flexion you can see that uh, well we've got a bit of artifacting at the corners we're going to fix that but the top of the dome is looking pretty good so what I'm going to do now is um, now the artifacting at the corners is basically uh, is uh, basically caused by this sort of vert that is here um, it's a bit like the problem we had when we we're trying to cap the cylinder with quads um, but it is it is more manageable in this case and I'll show you why so I'm going to double click to select that outer edge and I'm going to hit Z key to activate the uh, edge extend and I'm going to straight away hold down shift and click it once again to create a second edge and just drag out and I'm going to shift click once again just to create a few more spans and now switch back to reflection take my wireframe and my verts off and you can see that yes we have got a, a, a bit of uh, pinching on these corners 
if I increase the SDS subdivision level, it helps. Um, you can see we are going to get a little bit of pinching here, but it's pretty subtle. And the top of the dome is really, really good. So um, it's basically a choice of compromises. Do you leave a hole in your dome uh, or do you have a little bit of pinching on the sides? It, it, it's basically up to you. This is probably in terms of a polygon flow, the cleaner method and the method that most uh, professionals would probably use. But the, the hole is actually much quicker to do and pretty effective as well.